I speak the name, the name above all of the names. I speak the name, the name the wind and waves obey. All of heaven's coming down. Fill the earth with the sound of the name, the name of Jesus. I speak the name, the name of Jesus. I speak the name, the name above all other names. I speak the name, the name the wind and waves obey. All of heaven's coming down. Fill the earth with the sound of the name, the name of Jesus. Your name is healing. Your name is power. Your name is holy. My strong, strong tower, speak the name. The name above all other names. I speak the name. The name the wind and waves obey. All of heaven's coming down. Fill the earth with the sound of the name. The name of Jesus. Of the name. The name of Jesus. Good morning, good morning, good morning, kingdom citizens. How are you all doing, you beautiful people? Good morning, good morning. I pray and hope that you woke up with the praise and worship on your heart, mind, and soul for the Lord, and that you are ready to conquer and be victorious in this day. Amen. So good morning. This is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We are starting Joel this morning. So we'll be doing Joel chapter one and then chapter two verses one through 17 and then the third John. Third John. All right. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creator of heaven and earth, we just come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord God Almighty, for waking us up this morning, for getting us on our way, ordering our steps. We thank you for your will. We thank you for your purpose and your plan, Lord God. We thank you that you have set us up, that you are already in our future, that you already have everything taken care of, Lord God. We trust you. We depend on you. We rely on you, Lord God. And we thank you and glorify you for everything, Lord Jesus. We pray that you set a fire in our soul, your holy fire, Lord God. Set a fire in us. Give us the energy and the strength to labor in the Lord. Because we love you, Lord God, and we want to be willing spirits. We want to be willing, obedient spirits to hear your instructions and hear your directions and obey them. Write your commandments and your ways and and how how you want things done. Write them in our minds, our souls, our heart, Lord God. We thank you for increase in all areas of our life. We glorify you for it because we know that it is done. We thank you, Lord God, for your healing, for we know that it is done. We thank you for your healing hands, your healing spirit, your healing power. And we just glorify you for everything that you are and everything that you are doing in our lives, Lord God. And we just pray this in the presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh, in Jesus' holy, mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, Joel, we are in Joel 1, now I 
really can't remember if I've ever actually read Job before. <laughs> I may have. But I, because I know that I read the last few books of the Old Testaments before. So I don't, I, I don't remember what it's about. So Joel, the introduction of Joel in my book, it says the book of Joel is one of the shortest in the Old Testament. The first part describes a terrible locust plague concluding with a plea for confessions of sins. The second part proclaims hope for the repentant people coupled with judgment upon their enemies. Good morning, good morning, kingdom citizens. If you are just coming on, we are getting ready to read Joel. And I just read the introduction of what Joel is about. All right, so Joel. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men. And give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children, and another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up upon the land, my land strong and without number whose teeth are the teeth of a lion and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion he hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree he hath made it clean bare and cast it away the branches thereof are made white lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth the meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers mourn. The field is wasted. The land mourneth for the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil languisheth. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen. Howl, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up and the fig tree languishes, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. So I'm going to pause right there. Here is Joel. Here's Joel. This word came to Joel. This word of the Lord came to Joel. And first he, uh, he first he greets them and says, hear this, ye old men and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land. And then he tells them. Tell your children. So your children can tell their children and their children. And then the other generations, even after them. And we talk about this all the time. We have to, we have to learn the ways of the Lord and, and, and know how to walk and talk and, and be what it is God want us to be. So we can teach our children and then they can teach their children and then the children and generations after, you know, and so he's letting them know. 
the plagues of the locusts and all of this, all of these things have come and eaten up everything. And now he's saying, wake up, wake up, you drunkards. Those that weep and howl, drinkers of wine. So, so they must have, they must have, it must have been a lot of alcoholics running around because they must have been, you know, the pain of everything, uh, the, the turmoil of everything, um, you know, sin just wreaking havoc. So they became alcoholics. So he's telling them to wake up. He's saying, wake up. Because all these things have happened. All these things are going on, you know, and, 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 and we have to be that voice. We have to be that voice to, to wake up the people of God. You know, and we got to say, listen, look at what's happening. Look at what's going on. You know, turn away from your sins, turn away from your wicked ways. And, 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 and let's, let's get this right. Let's get this, let's get this right with the Lord, you know. So verse 13, Joel 1 verse 13 says, gird yourselves. And lament, ye priests, howl, ye ministers of the altar. Come, lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my God. For the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. Sanctify ye a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. So he's calling for a revival. That's what he's calling for. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. And so this is a word that God is giving him. He's, he's telling Joel to tell the people, you need a revival. We need a revival. Not just in one church house, okay? We need to gather all the people of God. <laughs> Rent out the AT&T stadium or something. <laughs> Rent out the AT and T Stadium. Let's us all come and let's gather. Let's gather pastors from all over and, and, and invite people from all over. You know, and let we. It's a it's revival time. You know, he's saying, call a solemn assembly and gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land so not just one little church house all so he's saying it's revival time the lord is telling him to tell the people this it's revival time so joel joel 1 15 says alas for the day for the day of the lord is at hand and as a destruction from the almighty shall it come is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed is rotten under their clods. Excuse me. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down for the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastors of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of waters are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastors of the wilderness. All right, so we're going to read two. 
chapter 2, verses 1 through 17. All right. Chapter 2. And it looks like I have read Joel before because I have scriptures underlined in it. I have read, but you know how some books you read it and it's such a short, it's such a short book. I probably read it and then, you know, moved on. Um, but it's always good to read it, come across it again and read it again. All right, so chapter two, it says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and a horseman. So shall they run like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains. Shall they leap like the noise of flame of fire that devoureth the stumble as a strong people set in battle array before their face. The people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro to in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong that executeth his word for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible and who can abide it so this is a prophecy okay this is a prophecy of the coming of Jesus Christ there is the first coming and then there's the second coming we are the remnant of people who are waiting for the second coming. And so he is coming with an army. So this, this Joel chapter two, this Joel coincides with Revelation, the book of Revelation, which we will be reading very, very soon. In Revelation, it show it explains and shows how Jesus Christ will be coming. With, he's gonna come. He's gonna come and pick up his saints. He's gonna come and 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 pick up his saints, and he's gonna ha- come with an army. He's gonna have s- saints and angels on horses, you know, and he's gonna come. 
So this is saying, blow ye trump, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. And so when we read in Revelation, when we go to Revelation, when we read it, we're going to be reading how there, there are angels being positioned and set in place to blow trumpets, to, to, to sound the trumpets and sound alarms. So Joel is preparing us, Joel, in, in, in chapter one, verse 14, we're reading that we, we need to have a revival. It's, it, it is time for a revival, a great revival, a, a revival that we uh, uh, like, like we've never seen before, you know, and I really believe God is setting us up for that, you know. We, we, we want to call the people and, and, and pray for the people who are going to be the ones to set this up. Like, Lord, who, who are you going to choose to set this revival up for all people, all, all the inhabitants of the land, all people all over? Who, who, who are you going to have set this revival up where people from all over can come? And where will this revival be? You know, where, where would you like us to have this revival, Lord God? So th these are things that we can begin to pray for and say, Lord, we, we look forward for the revival, you know. But he is preparing us for the coming of the Lord. We have to. Get ready, be ready, and stay ready. Amen. All right, so we're at verse 12, Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Excuse the yawns. Whew. I have been sleeping, but these past few days, um, you know, uh, don't know what's going on. Anyways, it says, therefore... Also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart, <clears throat> excuse me, and rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. God is so beautiful. <laughs> God is so beautiful and so awesome. So he says, rend your heart and not your garments. So b before they used to tear their clothes off, they used to tear their clothes off and they used to. So he's saying, rend your heart. He's saying, give your heart to the Lord God. And, and let God remove those things that are covering, that are that that are keeping your heart bound. That's that's trying to turn your heart into stone, things like that. And so he's saying, I repent. I repent. The Lord is going to repent of any evil. You know, he said, turn, turn back to me, turn unto the Lord for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. We, we are always going to be reminded that God will always until that day comes till the day comes of the coming of the Lord. Because when the when the second coming, when the second coming comes, that that when that day comes, he will not he will not call no one else. That'll be it. So he will be he will he he reaches out his hand. He's saying he's calling. He's calling continually calling. Return to me, children. Return to me people of God return to me all of you that I have written my name on your forehead that I have called you before you was even in your mother's womb come to come back to me and he is continually 
continually always doing that until it is done. It is finished. So verse 14, who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him? Even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Glory, 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 glory to God. Verse 17, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine inheritance to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Listen, can, can you see it? Can you hear it? Can like the great, a great, great revival. I'm not talking about little revivals in, in church houses. You know, you not, not those revivals that you would have in your personal church house. You know, one pastor, maybe two or three pastors gather together in one church house and 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 tell his congregation and their congregations to come. I'm talking a great revival. We're talking people of America, Russia, Africa, China, people of God coming from everywhere all over all the inhabitants of the land a great revival where people from all over come he says gather the sanctify the congregation and assemble the elders we 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 have something to pray about. We have something to pray for. This, this revival that the Lord God is preparing us for. Where we all come all over. Can, can you see it? The different walks of life all under one assembly. The different walks of life all coming to praise our one true only God, our Father in heaven, us praise and worship together, us hearing the word, different pastors, different ministers speaking and things like that. How long do you think an assembly like that would last? Well, most of the most of the time in the Old Testament. It would be seven days. A feast like that, an assembly like that, would last seven days. So, could you just see it? Seven days, people coming from all over, and we we all set up in hotels or whatever, and and and, and just have this great revival meeting one another, congregating, coming together as a unit. I can see why. I can see why the enemy is trying to stop us so much. A great unit like that, a unity of a body, the body of Christ coming together as one about the body of Christ that means people from all over 
So when you, if you, if you go back and you read in Acts, if you go back and read in Acts, uh, an assembly like that happened. In Acts, when the disciples, when the Holy Spirit came, and the Holy Spirit came and gave them the power of the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in tongues, it says, men and women of of all different languages was there from all over. So it so happens that God had brought people and gathered them from all walks of life, from all the different countries and nations. And they happened to be there to witness the disciples, the apostles becoming the, the disciples becoming apostles. They are apostles and, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. And each one of them understood what they were saying because the, the apostles were speaking in all their languages all at one time. And they and it says they marveled. They was like, how are they able to speak in each of our languages? And we can understand them. So we're, we're talking people of Africa, Russia, China. I mean, it was all different walks of life. And that happened in Acts. And it's going to happen again. We're going to have such a great revival. That it's just going to be like, whoa. Now, I've heard of such revivals happening before, but it was before I was even born. I know I know uh, in history there have been uh certain revivals that have happened but they they happened uh I, growing up i hear i hear the talk of the, the 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 people the remnant of the people still talking about those great revivals as i was growing up <laughs> and and then they're talking about them um uh i can't name off certain pastors and uh their their names are in my brain but uh pastors who have had great revivals of people coming from all over the world so now we need to see we need to see one you know and, and have one in our this this generation you know in this time i'm excited for it i would like to there are people, there are church houses and things like that who have had revivals and things. But the revival that I'm reading, the revi- the type of revival that I'm reading about, it's 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 huger than just one church house revival. Bigger than that, way bigger than that, and probably bigger than than the the world has ever seen in a while. In a very, very long time. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's move to third John. God is shaking the earth. Yes. And I, I, I want it. I'm, I'm ready for it. Like I want God to come and shake the earth. It needs to be shaken. It really does. It needs to be shaken. It, this, this earth, the, the, the people, you know, just like Joel says, awake you drunkards, you know, awake, wake up, you know, it needs, it needs to be shaken. Yes. Amen. I, I, I am ready for it. I, I am so so ready for it and and that's why i i even say get ready be ready stay ready you know amen you're awake michelle yes you are anyone coming on this live is awake everybody is awake on this live you know even those that that are watching the replay 
And that's why I say share, share, because we're going to we are we are going to stay in the word and we're going to continue to allow God to increase us and prepare us. And we're going to allow God to to build us and mold us and, and position us. You know, I want to be one of those people that that he uses to, to get this revival together. You know, I want to be one of those people that he uses that gathers the people says, come all ye who will praise the Lord. You know, I want to be one of those that he uses to, to, to call the elders and say, elders, come on, you still have work to do. Let's go. Let's let's have this revival. Let's let's come together and assemble together, you know. All right. So third, third John, the introduction of third John says. This is one of the shortest books in the New Testament. Third John is a letter with a kind but business like tone. The elder sought to encourage Gaius, who was perhaps a pastor under his oversight. The epistle gives mostly positive counsel, but also warns against a power-hungry leader named Diotrephus. Truth, love, and the goodness of God are predominant themes. All right, so... Third John is a, a, another letter, very short. It's one of the shortest books in the New Testament. I, I believe Second John, First John, and uh, Third John are like they're just quick letters, short letters. But first John had five chapters. So second John and third John are short, very, very short. All right. So it says the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So John, this is a this is this this is uh tapping and, th- and that's what I'm all about. I I I say life, business, and ministry. I talk about that all the time. So he wants he wants you to prosper and be healthy, even as your soul prospers. So while we are increasing on the inside and becoming healthy on the inside, he's saying, I want you to prosper and be healthy on the outside as well. So verse three, for I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee. Even as thou walkest, walkest in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. So he's saying, so it's it's almost like hearing me, hearing you walk in truth. So he's saying, all all of all of the people that you know uh, that he taught. And things like that. He he finds it joyful that he hears that they are continuing in the word, walking in the truth. So we we need to rejoice in each other. We need to rejoice in each other and be joyful when we see the blessings of Father God pour upon each other and that we continue walking in the truth. We are continually walking in the word. And so that's why it even brings me joy. You know, when I even see y'all come on every morning and and y'all are staying in the word with me, you know, those, those are joyous things. Those are things that, that bring joy um, to each other. Amen. Yes. 
So verse five, it says, beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. Because that for his name's sake, they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. Oh, thank you for sharing God's word. Well, thank you. Thank you for staying in the word. Thank you. No, truly, truly give gl glory to the Lord God almighty. And, and, and I pray, I pray, I pray that like we continue this together continually, continually continue this together. Says verse nine, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephus who loveth to have the preeminence among them receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth pranting against us with malicious words and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbiddeth them that would and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Demetrius hath good report of all men, excuse me, and of the truth itself. Yea, and we also bear record, and ye know that our record is true. I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee. But I trust I shall shortly see thee, and we shall speak face to face. Peace be to thee, our friends salute thee. Greet the friends by name. Now, in 2 John, he said the same thing. He wrote a letter. He wrote a letter to a, a, another elderly lady. And this, this, he's writing another letter to an elder. And in both letters, he said, I have many things to write to you but I'm not going to write them with paper and ink. I wonder what did he talk about? What did he go to them about? Like, there are so many things that are not in the Bible that are of God. Uh, there's even scriptures where it says that if everything, if everything was written, we wouldn't believe it. So there's a lot of things that God kept out. There's a lot of things that. And so John, John was told. There's certain things he is not going to write on paper. He's going to speak to them face to face. So there's a lot of a lot of revelations of God. That needs to be revealed. And, and, and when your mind is ready. When your mind is acceptable, when your mind has leveled up to that position where God will reveal revelations to you that is not even in this word. It happened to Paul. Paul received revelations, but he wrote them out. He There's certain revelations that he wrote out that God gave to him that he that that God didn't give to nobody else. Even Peter and and and, and, and now John, like each of the disciples have received something of God that would not be written that would that would have not have been written. So you prepare and just stay in the word. Because there are things that God that your mind is ready for. And there are things that God is going to reveal to you 
especially if you're someone who diligently seeks the truth. You diligently seek the truth. You diligently seek the face of God. You diligently seek to have a relationship with him. There there are things that God will reveal to you. And especially in the times that we are in. So he may he may reveal something to you that's getting ready to happen to uh, to in in the world now to us. You know, he may reveal he may reveal some secrets of darkness that is going on, you know, in your church house or, you know, something that may be happening in your family. You you never know. So you always have to be in that will of God and that right alignment because you never know when God is going to give you something that is not in this word. Because he he said if he if he if he had everything written down, it would have been too much for us. There's even the script we we came across the scripture where it says that um everything that Jesus did could not have been written down. Everything that Jesus so when I read that scripture, I was like, what? I'm like, okay, so Jesus healed the blind, Jesus healed the sick, Jesus made the mute talk, the deaf hear, the lame walk. Like there are so many things that Jesus did that we that we can read about. And it says not everything that Jesus did was written. Like there was so much more that Jesus did that was not written down on paper. So To have that relationship with him is to not only know of his existence, but to actually know him. And there will be things that he will allow you to know that's not even written in this book. So just like John says, I want to see you face to face. And, and and that's the type of relationship God wants to have with us. He wants to come to you face to face. He wants to see you face to face and tell you what he needs to tell you. Say what he needs to say to you, you know. But this 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 is this is awesome and this is good. And we we prayed for the elders. What? last week or a few weeks back and we want to pray for the elders again we want to pray for the elders we want to pray for the revival we want to we want to pray for the move of god to come in a way that we know we know that it is coming but we've never we we haven't seen it and, and and I'm talking this 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 generation, even even the generation before us probably have not seen such a great revival as as the one that I see in my mind, you know, that 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 the word is talking. It says assemble everyone everywhere. So we want to pray for these things, pray for the elders. We want to pray for the ministers. We want to pray for the pastors. We want to pray. We want to pray that everyone wake up. It is exciting. It is, Michelle. It is so exciting. And I'm I'm getting ready for it. Being ready, getting ready, and staying ready. Amen. So, yeah, this, this was short and powerful, but, man... Anyone else has any comments? Anyone else has anything to say? So if you are just coming on, you will have to go back and watch the replay. Um, We read Joel chapter one and then chapter two, verses one through 17. And then we read third John. So. 
and y'all keep coming on. We you don't want to miss the, the 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 ending. You know, we are approaching where we will we have read the whole entire Bible in one year. And so we will still continue even after after we've read the whole entire Bible in one year, we will still continue to come on every morning, getting into the words of God. And so now that we have placed the word in us, a seed that is sprouting and growing and increasing, you know, now that we have placed the whole entire word in us, we will continue to nurture the seed, nurture it by staying in the word, even every single day, every morning. So we will, we, and God is watering. He is coming in. He's providing the water. And, and, and increasing and growing it and growing it and growing it. And I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to see what the Lord God is doing with us, you know, as a body of Christ, you know, together, you know, I'm, I'm very excited, you know, to, to, to be a part of God's plans and purpose and his will for our lives and um so continue continue to invite continue to share and let everyone know that we come on every morning reading the words of god So af after after we've actually gotten through the whole entire Bible in one year, it will literally be a daily Bible reading, you know, and uh, I know in, my, in the spirit the you know, God says we're going to dive in like really, really dive in like he's going to take us even deeper. And like I said, there's going to be revelations and things like that that are revealed, you know, and you 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 should. You should literally be able to completely with with clarity hear the voice of God, you know, because we'll be taken to a next level. So I'm excited. I'm ready for it. I, I'm, I'm, you know, and, and this year is not this year is not up yet. So we still we are in October. We still have. November and December. And so God can do mighty, mighty things in two months. God can do things miraculously in one day. So we have two more months of this year. We'll be finished with the whole entire Bible by November 1st or November 2nd. We'll be finished with the whole entire Bible. And then we'll just continue in the word each and every day after that. But God, don't don't count 2020 out yet. You know, don't don't, don't count it out yet. We still have all of November and December and, and God is going to make moves because he's going to set us up for 2021 and prepare us. Amen. I pray for each and every one of you. Y'all pray for me. Continue to pray for me. Um, I am getting back healthy. You know, praise the Lord, God Almighty. I'm getting back healthy. Um, the strength in me is coming back. The energy is coming back, you know. And uh, even the, the swelling in my legs have gone down. Um and so now I'm going to just, you know, really start trying to do, I'm not a big workout person, but I'm going to still ch start really trying to uh, get my 10 minute workouts in because I was at five minutes and then I, I was getting up to eight minutes. So now I'm going to get my 10 minute workouts back in every single day. 
Um, and uh, gradually, because I, I try not to, I try not to put too much on myself, but, you know, and I know a lot of people are like 10 minutes. That's a lot for me. Believe me, <laughs> 10 minute workout. That is a whole lot for me. Um, like I, um, I will get dizzy and all kinds of things. So I don't try to put too much on myself, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start getting my 10 minute workouts back in and things like that. So y'all continue to pray for me, pray for me because prayer, there is power in prayer and, uh, and we're going to be, we're going to, we're going to do like John, John, John says, I pray that you prosper and be healthy as well as your soul prosperous. So let's pray. Let's pray for prosperity and health for each other as our soul prospers. So our souls are getting healthy and prospering. So now let us see that in the physical. Amen. Let, 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 let the spiritual come into the physical now, you know, because we are, we are, we are getting health. We are healthy on the inside. Now let's get healthy on the outside and let's prosper. We are full of riches on the inside. So now let's prosper on the outside and be healthy. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory to God. All right. So I have nothing else to say. And I don't want to be on here just yawning, yawning, yawning. <laughs> so you know that I love you all. Let's pray for one another. Let's even actually lift each other's names up. Those that are on the live. Um, we are still praying for the body of Christ. All of you who are going to come back and watch the replay, we are praying for you. If you do come back and watch the replay and you specifically want your name lifted up, then make a comment, hashtag replay. And, and, and then that way I'll know that you want me to pray for you. So let's let's pray for one another let's look at look at the ones who are on the ones who show up every morning other mornings um let's look at the names and let's pray for one another for prosperity and health and and that that we pray that we are positioned that we are ready let let's pray for these things and let's pray for this great revival and let's pray you know, for the move of God to come and shake the earth, you know, let's pray that each other, each one of us are awake and that we are awake and that we are aware. Let's, 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 let's lift each other's names up that are on here that, that come on every morning. Cause you know, you know, even though this, this may be a small group of people that that come on every morning that is okay because one person each individual michelle patricia beverly brother hamilton um i know there's other names other people that come on sometimes uh tony and um uh roy uh other people that come on i i lift y'all's names up because one of you if not all of you is going to do great and mighty things. So, and you're going to affect millions. You're going to affect, God is going to use each and every one of you that, that, that when you allow that light to shine bright, when you allow God to place you on that platform, you're going to affect millions, millions of people. So pray for one another. Lift each other up. Patricia, lift Patricia up. Lift Michelle up. Lift Beverly up. Lift Brother Hamilton up. You know, lift, lift everyone up that is on the lives 
and 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 then even pray for all their connections and 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 let's continue to lift each other up that we prosper that we be healthy and that we we be the voices that God uses that we are the hands that God uses that we are the feet that God uses Amen. Thank you for your prayers. God knows. Amen. Amen. So let's lift each other up and in, in, in prayer and um uh and just and just be there for each other. And and that's that's the first step of being there for each other. That's the first step of showing each other love is prayer. It don't stop there, but that's the first thing that you could ever do to show love and to be there for one another is prayer, lifting each other up, lifting, you know, and then, and then God will take it further and, and guide you, you know, in, in certain directions and, and, and get us together and things like that. All right, so I love you all. I really, really do. If you just came on, good morning, good morning, Kingdom Citizen. You will have to go back and watch the replay. Um, um, Beverly, Patricia, Lashana, God bless and increase the joy. Amen. And Brother Hamilton's on here. We definitely going to br- br- lift up Brother Hamilton too. Uh, I pray for every single one of you that you all prosper and be healthy physically, mentally, and spiritually. Amen. And Gloria, praying for Gloria. Amen. We're going to lift all the connections, lift, lift everybody up. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Amen. In Jesus' holy, mighty name, we are covered by the blood of Christ. All right. So I love you all. I really, really do. I do love you, love you, love you, love you. And I look forward to this great revival. I look forward to meeting y'all face to face. I look forward, you know, what whatever God has for us, I am very excited for it. And um, I, I love every last one of you. And I pray that you all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I will see you 530 in the morning.